Through algorithms, social media really knows you better than you know yourself. It only shows us what we like and eliminates things we don't like. Wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't think that is a bad thing because it, because being given information that you want to see it increase it piques your interest in this stuff and I also don't believe that it actually hurts your privacy because they're not actually getting any information about you they're just taking the stuff just showing you the stuff what you, what you want to see. I don't think that's a good thing because I feel like our privacy and our personal information is being sacrificed just for user like data and better usage. So yeah, that's what I think. So that's how it is. Social media applies a mathematical set of rules to their platforms to sort out the content their users would like to see. And then it keeps showing them similar information. That sounds a bit scary, I'd say. It seems what we see on social media is determined completely by algorithms. And that means it could be controlling our thoughts, our lives, and maybe our future. We should call for help! We have to fight the algorithms and stop them ruling! Can anybody help us? Hey guys, want to optimize your money? Then get yourself a social media platform. TikTok made four billion US dollars last year, and Instagram raked in a whopping 17.44 billion US dollars back in 2020. All just from ad revenue. How do they make so much money? With algorithms. Algorithms are tools used to prioritize content. Everyone follows so many different accounts online and has so many different interests. Social media sites simply can't show you everything. So they use algorithms to help them decide. But algorithms go bad. Fake news gets spread. There's only one way to stop them. Together! We are the best kept secret in the galaxy. We monitor license and browse all algorithmic activity on earth we're your first last and only line of defense we live in secret we exist in shadow and we dress in black hi everyone hi we're running out of time let's get to the bottom of this on with the game everyone Put your hands together for Caitlin and Nancy! This week, we're putting the rhythm back in algorithms. Check out our terms. Data. Formula. Echo chamber. Influencers. Fake news. Coding. Filter bubbles. Preferences. Targeted ads. Contestants, it's up to you to find those words. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your first clue. Digital marketing, aimed at a user's specific interests or traits. Targeted ads? In computing, a calculation to be performed on one or more variables. Formula! When information and opinions on the internet are made to reflect your own. A filter bubble. Uh, oh wait, isn't it? Well done, Nancy! You found our secret double pointer! Both of those terms actually mean the same thing. Let's keep going. People with the power to affect others' spending habits based on their social media presence. Influencers! That means it's the end of the round, and we have a winner! Congratulations, Nancy! Why does Nancy win? I buzzed! Yay! Hey, I buzzed! Fake news! That's all we have time for, folks. Thanks to our guest. Fake news! 
Kaylin, look over here. Tomorrow morning, you won't remember a thing. Excuse me? Bye! Huh? Who am I? What have I done? I just remembered someone asked me to put on a black suit and... It's Chuck again? I'll get back to him anyway. Actually, I know the exact reason why I am here now. We have an expert with us today talking about one of the biggest topics of our time, social media algorithms. And he's at ICRT right now. Let's go. Yes, we're talking about something highly confidential right now, the very complicated social media algorithm. But I suppose we could share that with you if you really want to know. So, hello, I'm Joey, you know, and big thanks to NDC National Development Council for facilitating the bilingual 2030 policy. We're right here creating another episode to our series, English with Expert. We're going to talk, cover some of the hot topics and the trending topics in the world of tech. Hopefully through these series soon, we'll see a dramatic and improvement in the English abilities of Taiwanese people far and wide. We have invited an expert here today. She has her own YouTube channel called Untyped. She's also someone who works at one of the FANG companies, F-A-A-N-G, which includes Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. However, I think recently, as Facebook changed their name to Meta, we should call it the main company, we have right here, Catherine Kai Xingling. Hello! Hi, everyone. This is Catherine. Hi, Joy. Hi. So we're going to talk about her experience in the world of tech, but also about what you think about social media algorithm. But I think we should first discover, you know, did you go to school for computer science? Yeah, that's my uh, college major. Okay, so yeah. you are a through and through engineer from college days to now your professional career. Correct. So you have your own YouTube channel called Untype. How long has that been? Uh, it's since 2020, so three years. For, for, for most of your viewers mm -hmm. on your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. are they people like me or are they software engineers? Like, is it difficult stuff to understand? Uh, I would say actually a mixture of okay. both people. <laughs> yeah, like my target audience were people who maybe have some interest in software engineering, yeah. but they are not in the field yet. And, mm. and maybe they can get to know a little bit more about computer science through my channel. So first off, Catherine, what is social media algorithm and how does it work? So social media algorithm, I would say it's not like a single algorithm. It's mm. like a set of approach okay. that the company, uh, like a social media platform they use to prioritize what you can see first mm. or the user can see first. Okay. And um, how do they calculate what you can see first? Is it of course, it's based on, I'm sure, preferences, right? But how do they know what your preferences are? Like, for example, if you use uh, Instagram and TikTok, maybe they calculate how long you spend on each post and video. But for Facebook, I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like back in the time before the algorithm is applied to any social media platform, like things are shown in reverse chronological order. So okay. it's like the newer post is on the top of older posts. So you see the newer post first. Yeah. Yeah. But then after they apply this algorithm, it's like the algorithm learn how a user like or what they like based on your behavior. Mm. Yeah. So it's more about the relevancy of the content. It, Put in a simple way, it's like they learn like how much time you spend on a post or what account that you subscribe to or where do you comment or hit likes on. Yeah. So unlike when we used to see, uh, for example, a blogger's uh, website mm -hmm. where you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom for the last uh, post, mm -hmm. now they put it to the top. So basically, the way they start to rank things are different and no longer is it determined by dates. Now maybe it's relevancy, you say, the one that you're probably accessing the most. So is there any way for us to figure out how the algorithm actually works? I would say no, okay. because um, yeah, obviously there's a lot of like machine learning, data science, statistics and math. Mm. And because of that, like the algorithm, the algorithm is constantly evolving, like with the incoming data, oh. and then so like it's like all the, each factor is changing based on a user's behavior. Mm -hmm. So the significance is also constantly changing. So it's impossible to know how much each matter. Like you can know they matters, but you don't know how much they matter. 
So what you're saying is even if you're talking to say a Facebook executive, he may not be able to tell you how the machine is learning to adapt to your preference and how it may start to calculate the algorithm. Yeah, they wouldn't know. I mean, even if you know the, you, you can see the code itself, you still don't know. Wow, yeah. okay. So the algorithm is almost like it's got a life of its own and it's using yeah. its own way to calculate your preference. Yeah, the computer is thinking for you. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, matrix reloaded, right? <laughs> but now according to Catherine, giving your big data to a computer who is now growing and learning on its own to using your own personal preference. Are people, of course people are concerned, but are there any pros and cons that you can see from this? Like, I felt like a lot of people would worry that they are trapped by the social media. Yeah. But for me, I wouldn't say it's a trap, but it definitely reshape our daily lives. And social media gives like give a person way too much information that a person can possibly digest and process. Right, yeah. yeah, so like I would say the social media algorithm itself, it's not a bad thing. It actually helps you to select things that you care about mm. and just filter out all the irrelevant things that you don't want to waste your time on. Since um, social media algorithms hope so purpose is to give you things that you may like, right? Mm -hmm. Without it, would it be just a whole lot of mess? Like we just not see the posts that we want to see? I think so. I think that it's just, it takes you a lot of brain power and time to go through the entire feed, right? To yeah. find out the things that you want. Okay, yeah. so on the pro side, I think the summary is that social media algorithm is necessary because you, your brain power is limited and you're a little lazy too. So you don't want to sift through thousands of posts before you find the ones that you like. Mm -hmm. So social media algorithm is to help you find the things that you like. Are there any other cons, any other negatives that you can think of? If a user only use one social media to be their source of information, mm. then it's likely that they only see the partial of a story. People tend to think what they see is a majority mm. and forget like there's another side of story that you probably just never know about. That's true. Yeah. But how do you avoid that? How do you, you know, see more? Of course, some people are thinking social media is using so much of my information. I don't want them to calculate all of these information. Do I just downright cancel the account? Or some people are thinking, what if I pay for the service? Will they maybe collect less of my data? What do you think about that? For me, like, I wouldn't want to pay for social media and Why? because even if, if I pay, I don't think they can actually keep the information private. Like, okay. I don't trust them enough. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. from some, someone who works for a tech company. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then actually I see some statistics before they did a survey and then asked people about this question. Mm -hmm. And most of the people think like, think like how I think, like they don't trust the company enough. Mm. Yeah. And then some people also just think um, like they are not concerned enough to want to pay for it. Mm. Yeah. And then some, a lot of people would rather just cancel their account or just don't use the social media. Okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, if you want to use this platform, like how would you think that if you pay, then you can get away from their algorithm? It's like, I mean, it's only like because you love this platform so much that you want to pay to use to have a better version of right, this platform. Right. But then if the platform just take away the algorithm, basically it will become like an old fashioned blog post. Uh, then true. suddenly all the good features are gone. Yeah. Then you wouldn't want to pay for it. Yeah. And yeah, like the unique and special part of that platform is gone. So you're kind of stuck in a dilemma because the reason why you like this particular social media platform so much mm -hmm. is that they have really good algorithm to give you the stuff that you like viewing. Mm -hmm. However, if you start wanting them to turn it off, then it will no longer be the social media platform that you fell in love with in the first place. Yeah. So imagine if you say, uh, turn on YouTube, or if you go to the YouTube webpage and it gives you a bunch of videos that are not even in the mother tongue that you speak mm -hmm. or say for me, it's not even in English, it's in Arabic, it's in, you know, Swedish, then I'm going to be like, well, I don't need to see this. Mm -hmm. And you forget that there's a whole world out there with content that you probably don't want to see or can't digest. Mm -hmm. So that is very important. 
um, how do we get out of this loophole then? Um, how do we get out of this dilemma? I mean, do we just not use social media to avoid having our information collected? Or how do we get a more diverse view of the world if we don't want this echo chamber being created on our social media? Like, for me, in my way, I was saying, you either don't use social media yeah. or you use many different kinds of social media to diversify okay. the source of information. But even yeah. if you do that, yeah. like I, I'm still the same person. I still mm -hmm. like puppy videos. I still like food videos. Mm -hmm. I still like to see some basketball and football content. Are all of the social media that I use gonna eventually converge on all of the things that I like, no matter how many that I use? Like that is possible, but then I felt like if you uh, compare to only one single source, if you it's use better. multiple, um, you give yourself a chance to see maybe like 40% or 50% okay. of the whole pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't just get things from one part. For me, like I never read news or rely on social media to read news. Okay. And if nice. I do read news, I read it from different places like maybe a version from Taiwan and a version from the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's like it gives me a lot more different perspective. Yeah. Okay, but that's circling back to what Catherine talked about at the very start. Algorithm is for lazier people, <laughs> right? It helps you with the things that you want to see. If I have to read two articles on every single topic, one on the US side, one on the Taiwan side, maybe one on the international side, that's three articles per topic. Mm -hmm. I don't have that time. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see more of the world, you have to not be lazy. You just have to see, you gotta go and actively try to see more of the world. Is that right? I would say it's more about critical thinking. Yeah, okay. you need to have the critical thinking when you use technology. Cause like technology is, developing and evolving because humans are lazy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But true. then to use it wisely, you yeah. have you gotta think critically. Yeah. Okay, so stop being lazy and if you're gonna <laughs> be lazy, we'll stop complaining about social media feeding you an echo chamber. I think that's the conclusion about what we talked about today, right? Uh, hopefully we taught you a little bit about social media algorithm and if you'd like to learn more or more about tech stuff, well you can watch Catherine's channel. It's called Untyped. Right? And of course, big thanks to NDC National Development Council for sponsoring these series. Of course, this is English with Experts, where we speak with an expert about some of the hot topics trending in the world of tech these days. I have been Joey, this is Catherine, and thank you for watching. Thank you.